This is the video lecture on leases. Now whenever you talk about leasing, what you're talking about is an alternative to purchasing. If you have a business and the business needs an asset like a building or equipment or vehicles, you have the option of purchasing those assets and we know all about how to handle that. But you also have the option of simply leasing those assets. And that's actually something that we haven't talked about before. So we're going to focus on that in this particular lecture. Now if we decide to lease rather than buy, what are some of the advantages? Well one of the advantages is flexibility. See if I own something, I'm pretty much stuck with it. But if I'm simply leasing the asset, I always have that option, that flexibility of maybe letting the lease expire or maybe leasing another new piece of equipment, changing things. So it does give you a certain degree of flexibility. It also helps you to protect against obsolescence because if you own something over the years, it becomes older and older and obsolete. But if you simply lease different assets every year, you can always have the latest and greatest. You also have lower monthly payments potentially and we'll see throughout the video sometimes there are potential tax advantages. So all of these would be considered reasonings and advantages behind why we would lease rather than purchase. Now when we talk about a lease we have to know the parties involved. There are two parties. We have the leasor and the leasee. The leasor is the person who actually owns the asset the leasee is the individual or the business leasing the asset from the leasor. So those are the parties involved and the relationships between those parties. Now one of the big questions that comes up whenever you talk about a lease is how do we treat that lease? Should we capitalize the lease or should we expense it? Now what we would prefer in most cases would actually be to expense it. Because if we can expense the lease, that's going to give us an immediate tax benefit. Because the more expenses we have, the less profit we made, the less profit, the less taxes. So that's why it would be our preference, if possible, to treat the lease as an operating lease, which means we can go ahead and expense it every month. That would be the best treatment. The other possibility is we might have to capitalize the lease. If that's the case, we're not going to get quite the same tax benefit, but sometimes we're required to do that. So even though it would be our preference to treat it as an operating lease and to expense it, sometimes we don't have that option. So the question is, how do we decide that? How do we make a decision about whether or not to capitalize the lease? Well, to help us make this decision, we have provided by GAP what is called a four-way test. And we're going to look at each component of this four-way test. And if we would like to expense a lease, then what we actually have to be able to do is say no to all four tests. If we can say no to all four of these, then we can go ahead and expense the lease. But, if we can say yes to even a single one of these four tests, then automatically we have no choice but to capitalize, which is not quite as desirable. So we're actually hoping to be able to say no. And we're going to talk about each one of these individually, but of course the four tests are transfer of ownership, bargain purchase option, 75% of useful life, and present value 90 percent of fair value. Those are the four tests. So the first test, transfer of ownership. What does that mean? Well that simply means when we sign that lease agreement is there any kind of a language in there that says there's an actual transfer of ownership from the leaseor to the leasee? If we can say no then we would go ahead and proceed to the other three tests. If the answer to this is yes, then we could just go ahead and stop right there because we would have to capitalize the lease. Then the second test, bargain purchase option. 
some leases will feature a purchase option. And that would say, for example, after one year and the lease is up, you could then buy the asset from the company. Some sort of a purchase option like that. Well, if they have one, and if the price is so low that it's a bargain, then that would be considered a bargain purchase option. So if we can say no to that question, again, we would proceed to the other two tests. But if the answer is yes, then we would stop there because we already know we have to capitalize the lease. Then the third test. This asset that we're going to lease, it has a useful life. How long are we leasing it in relation to that useful life? If we're going to lease it for more than 75% of its actual lifespan, then that's considered that it meets this test. So if the answer is no, we proceed to the final test. But again, if the answer is yes, we stop there. We have to capitalize the lease. And then the final test, we would want to calculate the present value of all the lease payments. And if that's more than 90% of the fair value, then this test is met. But again, if the answer is no, then we're finished and we can just simply expense it as an operating lease. But if the answer is yes, then we must capitalize the lease. So we're now going to take a look at a couple of examples. Here's the first example. A business decides to lease equipment from another company we're going to lease this equipment for a period of three years. We're going to be required to make an annual lease payment, $10,000. The lifespan is 10 years. The fair market value is $32,000. The borrowing rate, 6%. There's no purchase option. And the contract states that the ownership remains with the leaseor. So it also says they happen to use straight line depreciation. So based on that information, we have to decide the journal entry that to, is to be recorded. Well, before we can do that, though, we have to know how are we going to treat this lease? Are we going to capitalize it or not? So to make that decision, we're going to have to apply that four-way test. So part one of the four-way test, is there a transfer of ownership? The answer is no. It's said in the information clearly that ownership remains with the leasee, or the leaseor rather. So that means there is no transfer of ownership. So we can definitely say no to that. Then the second test, bargain purchase option. Well, there was no purchase option at all, let alone a bargain. So we can definitely say no to that test. Then we have test three. Now the lifespan of that asset is 10 years. 75% of 10 years is seven and a half years. Well, we're only leasing it for three years. So that means that we are not leasing it for 75% or more of its lifespan. So we can actually say no to that. And then the final test. Well, the lease payment every year, $10,000, based on the present value of an annuity factor, at 6% in three years, which is 2.67301, the present value is 26730 Well, the fair market value, 32000 90% of that is 28800 So that means the present value of the lease payments is not 90% or more of the fair value. So that means we can say no to that question as well. And since we were able to say no to all four parts of the four-way test, that's good news for us. That means we can go ahead and simply expense the lease. So that means all I have to do, it's very simple, I'm going to go ahead and expense it. So every year, I'll pay that $10,000. I'll debit rent expense and credit cash. That simple, that easy, and... The nice thing about it is I get that immediate tax benefit. So as long as I can say no to all those tests, I can expense the lease. Now this example is a little bit different. Another example, this business decides to lease equipment from another company. 
Again, three-year time span, $10,000 annual payment, lifespan of the equipment is three years, fair market value is $26,730, borrowing rate, 6%, no purchase option, ownership remains with the leaseor, and business uses straight line depreciation. Well, in this case, we apply the four-way test. Transfer of ownership, no. It says clearly in the example there's no transfer. Bargain purchase option, definitely no. There's no purchase option at all. But what about useful life? Well, it said the lifespan this time was only three years. Well, 75% of three years is 2.25 years. We're leasing it for three years, so we're leasing it for 100% of its useful life, so that's a big yes. So I could stop there because I already know I do have to capitalize the lease. But just to show you also this fourth test, again, the same present value, but a lower fair value, 90% of that, 24057 This is greater, so yes to this test as well. So even though we have two yeses, it only takes one. Remember, it only takes one yes to one of these four tests to require you to capitalize the lease. So in this case, you see the journal entries. And notice how different they are. They're quite a bit different because this lease actually has to be capitalized. So that means I'm going to treat this differently in terms of the journal entries. I'm going to debit leased equipment for $26,730 and credit lease liability for $26,730. And where does that come from? Well, if I go back, that is the fair value, the, the present value. So that's going to be plugged in and used in those entries. And because I'm capitalizing and not expensing, I actually have to depreciate the equipment even though I don't own it. So that's based on straight line depreciation, three year lifespan, 8,910. We debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. So you see how it's a different treatment and it's a more complicated treatment and we don't get the same tax benefit because we're having to book it almost as if it's an asset and depreciate it and capitalize it simply because we met one of those four tests.